You have to master your own mind. Don't worry about everybody else is doing. Worry about what you're doing. Focus on what you're doing, because everybody else out there, everybody judging you, they also have problems themselves. And that's what I realized myself. So I stopped comparing myself to everybody else, and I just compared myself to me. I'm, about, I'm my own hero. I'm my own hero. Ben Sweetland once said, 95% of all human problems stem from a negative mind. If that's true, and you don't want any more problems, it is your job to feed your mind with something better, something positive and transformative. It's your job to reprogram your mind through learning and self-development so you can find solutions to your problems and then notice the possibilities and opportunities that have always been lying right in front of your face, but your limited mind had not allowed you to see. Negativity keeps you blind to opportunities. It keeps you blind to the good in the world. It holds you hostage to your true potential. Negative people will always remain in the prison of their self-imposed limits. Sometimes it's a life sentence because they've convinced themselves there is no way out. They've convinced themselves it's someone else's fault that they are in that prison. Other people are holding them there, but they have the key. You have the key. The key to freedom. And it's in your mind. It's your beliefs about what is and what is not possible. That's where it starts. And from there you build. You build momentum, brick by brick, until you have created a masterpiece that you can call your life. You build your own life, starting with your beliefs, with your own work. It's a choice, and it's a choice you must make if you want a better life. If you want out of the prison of mediocrity, you must make that choice, and you must make it before it's too late. Bruce Lee once said, learn to discipline your emotions because if you don't, your enemies will use them against you. You see so many people looking around for someone or something to blame, someone or something to point to as to the reason why they are where they are as to the reason why they aren't where they want to be. Because they are believing and thinking the enemy is outside of them. So many people want to blame others for where they are in life. It's always someone else's fault. The enemy is always outside. But in reality, the enemy is rarely ever outside. Most often, the real enemy is in your own mind. The real enemy, the one that battles you every day, the one you must conquer is within you. You must kill doubt. You must kill fear. You must kill those negative thoughts. You must kill blame and take responsibility. You must kill weak thoughts and trust you are strong enough to handle anything. You must kill any fear of rejection and know if you value yourself, you can't be rejected. The battleground is your mind and the enemy is your subconscious and unconscious negative thoughts. If you want to win in life, you're going to have to fight those thoughts, fight those beliefs and kill them once and for all. You're gonna have to fight like a warrior. Face those thoughts, destroy those thoughts, and claim the quality of life you deserve. The enemy is rarely outside. In almost every case, it's an inside job. Having thoughts of lack, believing you have limitations, blaming others rather than taking responsibility, 
Not trying for fear of failure. Staying safe for fear of failure. And worst of all, not expressing your true self for fear of rejection. I will kill doubt. I will kill fear. All fear. Any fear. I will kill negativity. I will kill blame. And I will take ownership of this life I'm living. I will take control of this mind that is mine. These thoughts that are mine. My thoughts are now under my command. I am in control. No one else controls my mind. I do. I back myself. The enemy is rarely outside. It is always inside. You defeat the enemy by not fighting it, but by becoming better than it, smarter than it. You defeat it by working on you. That's how you silence the enemy within. Become greater than it through your own self work, through self-discipline. Through daily work, the better you get, the quieter the voice gets. The enemy within can't criticize the one who has done the work. It can't argue with someone who has no regrets. So do the work every day. Every step forward builds belief. Every step forward builds confidence. Every step forward develops habit. Every step forward is a step ahead of that voice. You have to you have master, to master your, own your own mind. And once you master your mind, you know, you know your own mind, everything else is, is, is taken care of. So can hurt me is about life. It's about you. It's about my mentality. But you get to develop your own mentality. So life is full of people who are getting bullied, people who are once again insecure, people who are going through problems, a lot of problems. But if you have this mentality, that you start to develop of you can't hurt me. When I, was, when I was going through SEAL training, all the training I went through, it's what you say to yourself on a daily basis. If you say you can't hurt me, can't hurt me. Every time I got my ass kicked in everything I did, whether it be a fight or a test or going through SEAL training or ranger school, can't hurt me, can't hurt me, can't hurt me. It starts to get in your mind. And before you know it, it's the truth. So when you fail, you fall on your ass, somebody bullies you, whatever's going on in your life, can't hurt me. Because why that, stands, why that saying is true is not because you say it. You have to put the work in to develop that callous mind to believe it's true. My advice to people who are going through hard times a lot of people know my story. I come from a very, very, very humble beginning. You have to be open with that. Like for instance, social media. A lot of people are on social media and what they do is they show you the best side of them. Everybody on social media, everybody out here in this world, if you have friends, everybody has two sides to them. We have the side that we want you to see, which is our best side, our best side. But we also have this side that we're not working on. The side we're not working on is that side that we want no one to see. Like on social media, everybody posts where they're going, you know, I'm, I'm going here for vacation. This is me in the gym. This is me here. This is me here. What I do is I post my bad side. I want, I let everybody know I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. I have to work on all these things. It's okay. So the first thing is you got to accept the fact that everybody judging you, you judging yourself, it is okay to be up. It's okay to not be exactly like everybody else. It's not, you know, it's okay to not follow the crowd. So that's the, that's the one thing I would tell people is don't worry about everybody else is doing. Worry about what you're doing. Focus on what you're doing because everybody else out there, everybody judging you, they also have problems themselves. And that's when I realized myself. So I stopped comparing myself to everybody else and I just compare myself to me. I'm, about, I'm my own hero. I'm my own hero. So a lot of people want to know what I say to myself when I'm out here doing these long events, my self-talk. So, so what are you saying to yourself, David, when you're out there and 
You're at mile 75 of a 135 mile run through Death Valley. Well, I tell myself, back in the day, I was the weakest person that God ever created. That's what I thought. I made this man to be the hardest man God ever created. That's what I tell myself. I tell myself I'm the hardest man that God ever created. Is it true? I don't care if it's true or not. I believe it. But a lot of people, like these books, self-talk, visualization, self-talk doesn't mean anything. You can tell yourself you're the best person to ever live. Self-talk without the work, without the work, is just lies. So when I'm telling myself I'm the hardest man on the planet, when I'm in the worst situation possible, I'm going back to the three hours I put into training every day. I'm going back to the 3 a.m. wake up call, looking at my running shoes thinking, God dog, 75 days in a row, no days off, running 15 miles a day. I don't want to do it. And you lace them up. So when I'm in that horrible spot and I'm talking to myself, I'm also recalling all the training sessions, all the years, all the hard work. So when I talk to myself that way, that self-talk is real. It's not lies. Because if you're taking a test in school and you haven't studied for it, and you say, I'm going to pass this test, chances are you're going to fail it because you haven't put the time in to get you know, the result of passing. So self-talk is huge, but putting the work in is bigger. There's a lot of people in life who are theorists. Theorists are people who, it may be that guy in the corner who's in the library all day long, old man with gray hair. He's the master of the mind. He mastered the mind by being a theorist. He got all these books and read about how the brain is supposed to work. That's a theorist. He has all these theories on how it's supposed to be done. You want to be a practitioner in life. A lot of people who study theories will put these bars, these invisible bars and barriers on your mind about what we can and cannot achieve as human beings. That's a theorist. A practitioner will listen to a man like a theorist and defy the odds. So never be a theorist, be a practitioner.